This episode is for Friday, October 30th, 2015. Spooky. Ooh. Welcome, Crater fans. I'm your host, Josh Owens, along with my co-host. Ben Strahan. How's it going, Josh? Really awesome. I am so, like, still riding the high from space camp. Oh, my gosh. It was such a fun time. It was. It was <laughs> epic. Epic. It was. It was everything I was hoping it was going to be when a bunch of Meteor developers come together, and uh, I'm just stoked that it turned out that way. Programming nerds. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, it was a total blast. So we're going to talk about Space Camp. Uh, mm-hmm. Katie wrote her recap. We'll go over that. Uh, we're going to talk about Meteor Weekly. What? Yeah, what? Medium and their tech stack. Oops, I just realized I didn't actually look at that article very well. Oh, awkward. <laughs> uh, defining methods and Meteor one to one. All right, let's get into it. Indeed. So, uh, if you weren't there, um, you'll obviously you'll hear the the live uh, studio audience crater podcast we did. Um, Sadly, it was my first run with the audio equipment and I did not check the sound levels and it was way hot. So um, (laughs) the the audio editor did the best he could with it, but it wasn't, it wasn't pretty. So, oh man, you mean we can't just like trash that show and not like have anyone ever see it? (laughs) Well, you know, it's only half a show because Ben needs his stories up front. (laughs) I don't know if I want to like. <laughs> it's going right out. History. Yeah, yeah. Is it live yet? Oh. Not yet, but oh. My assistant. Just, just for the record, on. just for the record, everyone, I am a lightweight at drinking, and I I didn't drink for I don't know what I think it was like. Oh, like fifteen years I haven't uh, drank at all. Yeah, except for like two years ago I started drinking beer again. Oh my. And, and, you and liquor. <laughs> it's all Carl's fault. Carl from OK Grow is like the chillest guy I know. Like he is like he could be a spy and no one knows it. He's but the guy that just keeps pouring you little sips of hard liquor when you're not paying attention. And just then before like, the show, he was like sitting in the corner. He's just like sipping this thing, and it looks like it's no big deal, right? I'm like, all right, I'll have one. <laughs> nice. <laughs> oh man, you thought it was a strawberry daiquiri or something, didn't you? Yeah, right. Turns out, <laughs> gotch. I thought it was like a kitty cocktail, you know. That's what I always do. <laughs> so I, I will just apologize for the quality, but I did want to get something out because we did talk about some stuff. And I'll apologize for myself <laughs> just because I should. <laughs> oh goodness! Okay. But, but so we, we, we definitely great. make sure we give Ben all the stories ahead of time now. <laughs> oh yeah, that was hilarious, and it was great having having Chet sit in my lap. That, that was just a wonderful moment. <laughs> Well, I, it's understandable. Everyone wants Chet Corco sitting in their lap. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, anyway. so that was Friday night, right? <laughs> Pretty, uh, what'd they say? Netflix and chill kind of night. <laughs> oh, that's a different 30 kind. minutes from me walking in the door and all of a sudden Chet was in my lap. <laughs> I didn't, I didn't know that the, you were posting in the space camp group on your way there. Like, I need someone sitting in my lap. What? No, I'm just kidding. Uh, so, number one. All right, let's, let's get serious. Uh, okay. You should go read this article. It's got some pictures in it, um, not of people sitting in Ben's lap, um, but of, of the venue, which I think was pretty friggin' awesome. I, I mean, we, we looked a long time to find an awesome place, but I was actually still blown away having seen the pictures with the the view that that deck had. And it's just yeah. got this huge wall of glass windows going up three stories uh, that kind of look out into the into the mountains. So yeah. that, well, let me paint a picture, picture for people that weren't there. Or if you don't know what we're talking about, like, where have you been? Come on. Like, this is the first ever meteor meetup for – for the whole community conference and, yeah and it was like an unconference for a whole weekend in yeah. the mountains of tennessee in David forge tennessee it was a beautiful area our boy josh here locked down this like mansion of a cabin how many bedrooms was in that place 14 i think oh my gosh it was like awesome and we yeah. sold out the whole event and uh just think of so many meteor guys people that write articles uh 
everyone that you know who is someone in the community and and uh they all came together and like pretty much met for the first time face to face and it was a blast it was it was yeah. and don't, don't miss the next one everyone yeah really oh wait i gotta plan that shoot <laughs> yeah, you got to get a bigger place now, I think, too. I, I do. I do. I mean, so we're looking at like more of a summer camp style where you'll have cabins and then you'll have like a central mess hall area and then we'll like do the talks and the gaming and all that kind of stuff. In the central. That's awesome. So, I think that'd be a lot of fun. So what do we do this the uh, second day? So, well, so that night, you know, oh, sorry. we did the podcast and then we had games. Um, I brought 14 board games. Uh, so it wasn't quite as lively that night. I think a lot of people were traveling and kind of tired. Um, but my wife made some killer lasagna. Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, after the, a little bit before the podcast, some people were playing games. Uh, and then afterwards I saw, I think someone played ticket to ride. So there's a lot of fun games going on. Uh, yeah. and then Saturday, you know, we, we got up, uh, my wife made some, tasty casseroles and then we had um we had talks afterwards so it was kind of like purposely unorganized you know we just i had a, a piece of paper and people came up and wrote their names down and i kind of sorted that into a list of talks and uh we ended up going up to the second floor and it was a little crowded but you know that's where the tv was and where we could present and um you know, there's a couple pictures of that. Like it was definitely standing room only there in the black in the back. Um, but we had a lot of great talks. Like Paul talked about rest to DDP and how that that stuff works. And uh, Marhan gave a talk about uh, switching from Java to Meteor. And uh, Chet talked about Meteor and Neo four J. Uh, Dean juggled for us. And talked Fascinating. About, yeah. I think. I thought that was a fun talk. That was. So I'd actually seen a previous version of that talk, and I, I like this version way better. So he did a great job. Yeah, it's been amazing. I've been able to see him iterate each time. I think that was like the fifth or sixth time he gave that talk. And yeah. you could tell, like, he really spent some good time polishing it. Yeah. So. Yeah. That was up there as one of my favorites. Um, Pete Corey gave a good talk on security, why you should always check your arguments. Mm -hmm. Check yourself before you wreck yourself. That should be the title of his, to his talk. <laughs> uh, Iko got up and gave an impromptu talk about uh, why slides are important, and he didn't have any slides. <laughs> Ironically funny. He did a great job, though. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, that was you know, I think, honestly, uh, Eric uh, Terpstra, I think that's how you say it, uh, maybe gave my my favorite talk um and it was the uh deploy to windows question mark and uh it was really really interesting because he was talking about trying to deploy to a windows environment and he talked about all the frustrations involved and uh he's got some code that's now been committed into core and came out with a uh, meteor 121 so yeah. that was kind of exciting yeah and it was funny yeah yeah, yeah, definitely. It was like it was like that that dry humor, funny, you know. Yeah. That that's my favorite kind. So, yeah, kudos to him. Uh, <laughs> Ramsey talked about Webpack and React and Meteor, and uh, maybe maybe a little fail during his talk. He's like trying to compare regular Meteor to Webpack and how fast it reloads, and it's like they almost look the same to me. Uh, <laughs> he was serious about it, and everyone else was like. What? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> my build time is like five seconds. Come he on. did. He did show it again later, and it, it did. You could see it was much faster. <laughs> but I understand what he's saying. Yeah. Like, like just that little bit. You want, you want to see your results right away. Mm -hmm. You don't want to be pausing. Yeah. Yeah. Like a fifteen-second pause means that you're on Reddit, like mm -hmm. typing nasty, you know, troll comments or something. <laughs> Whatever all the kids do on Reddit these days. <laughs> Uh, oh man <laughs> then we had to talk where the guy forgot to put his mic on that was terrible terrible it's a great was that me? it was epic yeah it was you <laughs> uh, who was the presenter that was supposed to be like checking people <laughs> or uh, the, ooh, the, um, the host or <laughs> well you know you want to know how many people i had to remind to put a mic on <laughs> none, none. 
<laughs> That's so bad too, because I had a pretty good presentation. You I did. I liked it. Uh, you talked about making money bot and, uh, I think it's funny because had that presentation got up on the internet, everyone would be like, what is this? Like he's trying to sell us on some kind of thing. <laughs> but you, you guys just like hacked on a project on the way down and it's all about currency trading. So Yeah. Of- yeah. Just like over uh, com- coming down in, in the, uh, our van, 10, yeah. ride, 10 hour ride. And then you stay up for like another 10 hours, right? <laughs> Overnight. <laughs> you should have seen your face in the morning, Josh. I know. Dude. Um, we went to bed and you're sitting there, and then we get up and you're sitting there still, and it's like, oh my god. You were so unamused. <laughs> like I think you just like walked by, just shaking your head. Because <laughs> you were like smiling, no less. <laughs> Who's smiling? I'm so excited. Anyway, are you like my wife? My wife won't let me say good morning. Did I ever say that? No. Did I ever tell you that story? She won't let me say good morning first thing in the morning. Like, I am, like, raring to go. I'm like, I'm alive. Yay, it's another day. I'm like, good morning, sweetheart. She's like, you're not allowed to say good morning. You only can say morning. So I have to say morning from now on. Anyway. Is she the one that you have to put the coffee in her hand before you can speak? <laughs> anyway, when I, saw, when I saw you and Wendy walking by, that's what I thought of. I'm like, oh, I better not say good morning to him again. <laughs> they might punch me. If, no. It's just funny. Like, we were really tired. We were up till, like, 3 a.m. because we had to run to Walmart to get more groceries. And then, you know, we got up at 7 to start cooking again. Yeah, that's when I started on the project again was 3.30. I forgot what we were talking about. But, man, time just flew. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It was so much fun. Uh, they made another talk by James Baxley about making church modern and how they've got like a multi-site church and they're using Meteor to kind of change the game there. Which what, a, what a sleeper talker, right? Like you, I didn't think this was going to be something really big, but oh man, am I impressed with their stack. And mm-hmm. like that was an awesome like modern CTO talk on how to be like agile mm-hmm. with a small team and produce a lot. Like, right, which you wouldn't really expect valuable. out of someone running a church organization. <laughs> no, it was it was a really valuable talk. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. And you know, I I didn't get much of a chance to talk to him because he didn't come back for for day three. But mm. uh, we talked a little bit when I was driving him to his car, and uh, you know, the the church I go to, Crossroads, they're similar to that. You know, like they're they're one of the other churches that I know that's using uh, Meteor, and now they're playing with React Native as well, and kind of building kind of a, an epic dev team over there. So that's awesome. And then as a special surprise, like I, I asked uh, Matt McClard to give just a, an impromptu Q and a about being on shark tank, which uh, I don't think a lot of people realize had happened. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we have this, this guy writing a meteor app and they got on the shark tank with foot cart again. And so we just did an impromptu Q and a. So to be clear, um, they're working on a Meteor app for the Sox subscription website, but it's not quite released yet. So, um, but it was interesting because I think some of us wanted to hear like, you know, what's that crush of traffic look like? And he talked about, you know, getting like 11,000 people a second or something onto their site. Yeah. And then like he had a sharp drop off, but then, you know, they were still up like 200% over normal daily traffic, like day after day uh, after that. So pretty pretty big it's amazing yeah the biggest thing that shocked me was like you're watching shark tank and it's like a little 10, 10 minute segment per mm-hmm. business right yeah and he was saying like uh when you're there you're actually getting grilled for an hour and a half to two hours. yeah 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 totally and the kicker is you know he walks in and they they rip away their pants <laughs> So did they stand there for like an hour and a half just talking about their business and their underwear? Oh my gosh, I didn't even think about that. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty funny. And then, and then he was saying like he had he had like gone in and stitched the uh, the opening on the front of the boxer shorts. He had stitched them closed, and they they were like double bagging and triple bagging on the underwear to make sure nothing was visible. <laughs> pretty funny. Oh, I tell you what, if there was a slip up there, they probably wouldn't get funding. <laughs> maybe maybe they, would. they would. Mr. Wonderful. Mr. Wonderful would probably make him an offer. Kevin or Larry. <laughs> uh, yeah. And so after that, like, you know, I, obviously we, we had like pumpkin chili for lunch in between the talks, uh, which was pretty tasty. And then, 
Uh, what did she make for dinner that night? I don't even remember now. I don't know. I just came down whenever it smelled really good. Wasn't there pot pies? <laughs> that, uh, yeah, that, that was it. There were that pot was pies. Amazing. Yeah. That was amazing. Yeah, that was, we didn't quite plan the pot pies out right. We ran out and a couple guys didn't get it, but oh. we left over lasagna. So I don't think they were super sad. <laughs> Uh, and then, you know, that's when the gaming really kicked into high gear. Uh, it was it was pretty awesome. I played some Pandemic. I, I got to play King of Tokyo. I, you guys kept playing Coup. Uh, yes. Which I did not get a chance to try out, but it looked pretty fun. So I never played board games before except for, like, Monopoly back in the day. Yeah. And my brother would always want me. So, like, since then, I, I just never played board games. Yeah. Until that night. You're sold, aren't you? I, I kept on winning Coup. Yeah, it's fun. And I never lied once. Because <laughs> I, I can't lie. <laughs> nice. Nice. Yeah. And then you played Exploding Kittens, right? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> that is such a gross game. <laughs> so gross. I did not. You know, it's funny. Like, I didn't even bring either of those games. But I was telling someone, like, it was, it was awesome because um, – there were some guys that came there, you know, like Devin and, and Sam Corcos. Devin, Devin brought some of those games. Yeah, Devin is awesome, man. <laughs> and, uh, like, I was so glad to have a lot of those people there because I had no idea how to play half the games. And they just, like, they'd crack it open and get things going. And it was a lot of fun. Oh, my gosh. Just a so lot of fun. fun. And then Sunday we had the hackathon. Um, and uh, we had about – we had 21 people sign up. So I just broke everyone into random teams of three. And uh, they had about 10, 10-ish hours to build something. And uh, it, was, it was pretty interesting to see what people came up with, you know? Uh, yeah, it was impressive. 10 hours. Yeah. And they actually had stuff to demo. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So the, the winners, third place was uh, Reruled, uh, Ramsey and Adam Smith and Kendall Smith. Uh, Adam and Kendall, no relation, just have the same last name. Um, but it was about like making up your own rules and tracking what those are and being able to share them with people, which was, you know, kind of fun given the context. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then, you know, randomness threw together three designers, uh, Dave, uh, Bascom and Devin Patel and Jesse Florig. And it, it turned out like they just decided to hack on a CMS, uh, called sauce CMS. And, uh, it's like this package you can install now. And it was kind of awesome to watch them because they were just doing like this uh, in inline editor type of setup, and uh, you're able to just hook it up and like control the 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 content that's on the page. Just you know, if you're an admin, it just kind of works when you click on it. Yeah, pretty cool. It is. Uh, and then um, I go and, and Mitch uh, and Matt McClure, they uh, work together on something called Once Upon a Tweet. And uh, it's the idea that you tell a story one tweet at a time, um, but it's, you know, you just have to include the hashtag and it'll, you know, it'll put that tweet in there. And then there's like retweeting for upvoting essentially yeah, for which parts of the story you like. And it, it starts the day by grabbing a mashup of like two uh, trending topics on Twitter. So kind of fun. Did you see the demo of that? Because I was like kind of disappointed that they hit the, the Twitter API limit. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah. I didn't get a chance throughout the weekend to see a tr see a demo of that. Yeah, I really I wanted to. I don't think I did either, but hopefully they'll get it fixed and publish it. So yeah, it was impressive. Uh oh yeah, they did actually publish it. It's linked in this article. That's awesome. It's very cool. It was an awesome, awesome show. Indeed, awesome conference. It was uh, it was exhausting. Like I, I definitely on Sunday I was glad for the hackathon because I was like so tired. We made two trips to Walmart. We cooked all that food and just like organizing everything just wiped me out, man. I was man, you and Wendy did a great job hosting, <coughs> like through the roof. You guys are awesome. Thanks. Yeah, and you guys are always out running somewhere, getting something for us. Always was right there to like. I don't think we ever had a shortage of anything. Yeah. Except for pie. Pie. Yeah. Oh man. I love pumpkin pie, but I I'm man, I miss some of that fruit pie. Mmm. Yeah. Oh, don't, 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 don't
to, well, I can't even talk. Don't make the mmm sound if I didn't get to have any. <laughs> mm. No, it was, it was pecan pie, actually. And oh, that's right. That's what like I remember. Chocolate soap pie. Yes. Um, but the main attraction was definitely the pumpkin, and we had three of them, <laughs> and, like, the other stuff went first. So now we know, like, pecan and, and chocolate soap pie are way more preferred. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man, amazing. You guys, it, it was just amazing. So I, I will say we, we kind of nailed it on the alcohol. Um, we only came back home with like six bottles and like uh, maybe three quarters of a bottle of rum. So I learned that no one actually likes rum when they ran out of the other hard liquor, they started drinking the rum. <laughs> um, but we, we were pretty spot on with the beers. So I was pretty happy with that. Yeah. We went through quite a bit. I bet we went through at least 30 cases of beer. <laughs> oh, <did we>? yeah. <laughs> it was yeah. a lot of fun. Well, it was a really good time. Uh, friendships formed and other friendships I already had got a lot deeper. So it was, it was a real blast. Yep. Yeah. Wish everyone lived closer. Yep, definitely. What do we um, got next, man? Meat Eater Weekly. Awesome. Birthed while at Space Camp, actually. It was, yeah. So this is uh, a rebirth. 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 I would yep. say it's a rebirth. Yeah. Uh, this week in Meteor has transitioned over to Meteor Weekly, mm -hmm. or I would say it's like a fork of it. Yeah. Like the original creator, yeah. uh, Rishi, follows it. And so Rishi's going to be the curator of Meteor Weekly. Um, our boy, uh, Carl, uh, from OK Grow made the logo. Mm -hmm. You guys are working together. And uh, Rishi is just like the cornerstone of it because out of every – out of everyone that like reports news on Meteor, uh, Rishi like takes a unique uh, take on it. Like he's different than everyone else. Like, oh, it, he, he takes he like hours deeper. to like yeah. research stuff, and it's really, really amazing. Yeah, this is the one newsletter that that all serious Meteor developers uh, really take a pause and and, tr and really digest it. Sometimes go through it twice or three times because of how dense it is. Yeah, so it's really valuable. And uh, so I guess like, I don't know, I'll just like do a PSA right now, like for all the Meteor devs that, that are just hearing about Meteor Weekly now, you guys should go to MeteorWeekly.com and sign up. Yeah, uh, with definitely. Your email. Yeah. Um, and you won't regret it. Like this is the type of information that you need. He does deep dives into uh, uh, core updates as well as um, like the best of the best uh, content that has come out that week uh, yeah. on Meteor. So, yeah. And, you know, the core stuff, I always find that interesting, right? Like, I, mm -hmm. I see all the other stuff posted on Crater, but he does, like, a deep dive into, like, the Quip docs that they're putting up and looking at all the commits and kind of summarizing the interesting things. So it's definitely worth going to MeteorWeekly.com and signing up. Um, yeah. Sadly, you know, I think it is a little bit of a disservice to the community that he wasn't allowed to take those email addresses uh, that had already signed up for this week of Meteor because I think a lot of those people they're really there for what's now Meteor Weekly and not for what this week of Meteor is likely going to become whatever yeah. it is. Well, I mean, I I'm really good friends with Rishi. He's from Chicago, just like I am, and mm -hmm. um, I really like the guy. Yeah, uh, and yeah, it was an interesting situation that happened between this week and Meteor uh, and now Meteor Weekly. Mm -hmm. but, I mean, I got the first email. From this week in Meteor uh, today, they published the first one today. Oh, did they? Yeah, I I was I was a little disappointed because uh, that that morning Sunday morning I got like an email that was just a recap of all the previous work that Rishi had done, and I was like, well, that's not that great. Yeah. So, I mean, I got the email today, the newsletter today for this week in Meteor, and it was decent. It was decent. Um, so, I mean, another piece of content. I would, I would still be subscribed to it. I, I found value in it. But, um, you know, I don't think that there's e any reason to compare the two because I, I would assume Rishi's newsletter is just going to be, uh, like, much more pertinent on what I'm looking for. And yeah. The yeah. Type stuff, so. I, I would agree. Like, I'm, I'm looking over uh, the, the one that went out, and it mostly looks like just a collection of links, not, um, not, not really like Rishi tends to give his own take on it. Why it's important. Yeah. Uh, which he does a great job, like abbreviating it. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. I appreciate that too. So definitely. 
Unlike oh. us, we do a terrible job at abbreviating oh things. I think it's me. Like you do a pretty good job. I, I need to work on it, man. <laughs> so. All right. Uh, yeah, yeah. So I, I don't know. Like I, I feel like uh, I, I could probably put out this week in Meteor just using Crater's uh, upvoted, most upvoted stories of the week or something. <laughs> <laughs> well, like I said, I'm going to stay subscribed to it for a little bit longer. But really right now I see it as uh, uh, they're serving two different uh, it, it, it feels like a filtered, like a weekly filtered version of the Crater Daily email, yeah. right? Yep. So, yep. Yeah. I mean, I, you know, it's probably valuable to some, but yeah. I, I look at every post that comes into Crater. So, you know. Right. Um, yeah. Sign up. Sign up. If you're not already signed up by now, because like you're, we talked for like five minutes, it's like, what's up? So I'm going to give you a second warning, MeteorWeekly.com. Definitely. Right now. If you're not on there and you listen to this show regularly, you just suck. Just stop sucking. <laughs> Go sign up. I'm just kidding. It's brand new, so don't feel bad. <laughs> if next week you're not on it, that, that's on you, not on me. <laughs> <laughs> I want people to know how good it is. Come on. It is. It is. It is. Yep. All right. So um, next up is a post on Medium, a post on Medium about Medium's tech stack. That's so um, metal. Yeah. <laughs> my mind when I started reading it. No. Uh, and they, you know, I, I, I just think this is a good read, right? Because scaling an app is so different than building an app, in my opinion. Um, yes. So they even, there's a dig in here. Uh, oh, here it is. For a site seemingly as simple as Medium, it may be surprising how much complexity is behind the scenes. It's just a blog, right? You could probably knock something out in Rails in a couple of days. <laughs> I love that quote, right? I mean, it's it's totally a dig on the fact that, you know, the 15-minute blog thing that, that yeah. Jage did forever ago. Yeah. Um, so I, I like that little nod of humor. Uh, but, you know, they talk about using Ansible and Amazon's VPC, virtual private cloud, and using CloudFront, and just all the stuff that's involved in their application. And I think mm -hmm. once you like, you know, you, you've got an app that you build here and you spend, you know, a couple weeks or a couple months like perfecting that and it's all written in one language and then like, you know, you start to get some traction and some users and you realize like, oh my God, in order to scale, we're gonna have to do something different. Yeah, and, uh, you know, you really start pushing the envelope on what what something can do. I mean, they're using Node, um, but then they had trouble with the database pretty early on, and they they went with DynamoDB for the public launch. Um, so Use a little bit of Neo four J for relationships. Yeah, uh, yeah. I haven't heard of Amazon Aurora, uh, so I wanted to. I'll click that link for later. All right, yeah. perfect. I'm going to read that later. Where's that one at? They have a database section. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah, so they're using Amazon Redshift for the data warehouse. You know, so I mean, it's just, listen, I, I geek out on this stuff. Like this is, scaling apps is definitely one of my favorite things. Like I, I used to run a, a podcast called Web Pulp TV and it was all about the, the guts of the web. Oh, nice. Uh, and uh, I should definitely like try to find those shows and get them back up there. But, um, you know, they, they just talk about all the different things that were involved in getting this thing out the door and how it operates and that kind of stuff. So go read yeah. it. Yeah. I find it fascinating um, that you can get so much done uh, with some of the frameworks out there right now, especially like Meteor, to get an MVP going. And it, it's like legit MVPs. Like they're mm -hmm. pretty solid. Um, but my gosh, you are really hitting engineering walls when you're, when you're trying to scale. Oh yeah. You gotta yeah, start breaking will. out little chunks, have multiple different databases. Mm -hmm. um, your engineering uh, team just explodes because of all these specialized units that you need. And it's just, it's shocking the effort that it takes just to get more users on your site. Yeah. It's, it's yeah. unreal. It still blows my mind. So yeah. Well, you know, I mean, awesome article. I got to be around like, and I knew some people that worked at Twitter when they were dealing with scaling issues and, you know, it's, it's really interesting to watch that stuff because they, mm -hmm. they're, they're basically trying to figure out how to like segment and, and mitigate like 
scaling issues by pulling the app apart into different pieces that they can then scale in a different way, you know, and using things like Cassandra or like using murder for deployment, which is like BitTorrent uh, oh, deployments uh, deploys, which is, uh, you know, that stuff's super interesting to me. Yeah. Um, and they, you know, they, they said something in here, like they do automated deployments, continuous deployments. Um, uh, they deploy sometime around uh, five times a day. Sometimes it'll peak up to 10. Um, and they That's use awesome. They, they monitor air rates and basically, uh, before they fully deploy everything, they deploy it to like one or two servers and watch the air rates on those servers. Hmm. And if they go up, um, they'll flip those back and they're just using like DNS to handle all that. So, um, there Crazy. are medium is like a great case study that people could really start learning how it was developed and everything. Um, Oh, what is that? design company that ended up being bought out by Facebook. They were Quebec or from Toronto, but then they worked for Leland Thatch hmm. or something like that. Yeah. Anyway, so they did a write-up because they were one of the, uh, they were the first design firm for Medium. And so working with teams, uh, distributed teams, multiple designers and multiple design firms, and they were heading up the whole thing. Hmm. They, they have an awesome Medium post on that. Nice. As well. And then... The guy who made Bootstrap, uh, Fat. Yeah. Yeah, one of the guys. Mark Otto. Yeah, yeah. But uh, the Fat guy goes and he works for Medium now. Yeah. And he has an amazing Medium article about CSS and structuring CSS for mm -hmm. Medium and all the issues that they went on with that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because he went in there and like kind of wrangled it and cleaned it up, right? It was. That article is like one of my all times. Just one of my all times. Nice. And I love his writing style because that's like mine. Mm. Where you like interject goofy, nonsensical stuff. <laughs> 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 but anyway, like True. Maybe, every day for Ben to be a great uh, case study for for just the web and the modern web and, and the struggles of scaling. So this is just one more thing to add to it. It yep. is an amazing article. I'm glad you included this. Yeah. Well, you know, I mean, it's, it's no news. It's, it's not media related. Uh, but you know, I think trying to expand the horizons. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Next up defining methods. Yeah. Yeah. Our boy, David Weldon. Well, CTO what? of Athena. Athena. Yes. So that's a media app. Mm -hmm. And, uh, so people, what, what you don't know about Meteor, some people might be listening and they don't know what Meteor is or they know they heard of it, but they haven't started a project up with it. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the cool features of Meteor is latency compensation, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, how we kind of do that, how they achieve that is like faking out the client. Uh, so, so if you want to run secure code on your server, typically you have to go and like trigger that to happen. You got to run it on, on your server and the whole time the client's waiting, a spinning wheel, la, 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 for the server to come back with a response. Latency compensation is, since we have JavaScript on the client and the, and the uh, backend, and we also have a database on both sides, we go ahead and stub out that change and the client sees it right away while our server go, go, goes ahead and like make sure it's legit and all that stuff. If it is, they send it back and, hey, the client doesn't change at all. It's like the legit stuff. If it was incorrect, then it will erase what the client did on the client side. And it keeps everything safe. But at the same time, uh, the client feels like the app is just working constantly, uh, really fast, always connected, almost like a desktop app. Uh, so that's methods. And what David talked about here is how they build methods uh, in a unique way. And so this is for the media people to geek out a little bit. Um, one thing that I really like Josh about this article is how he uses check for his schema mm -hmm. and they don't use simple schema at all. Uh, and check is a little package that everyone should use where when you're passing, uh, arguments to a publication or a method, you check that before you, you execute your code, uh, whether it's a string, an object or whatnot. Pete Corey's talk is a lot about that. Yeah. Right. So, yeah. so uh, Dave uses it for his schema. Yeah. 
I thought that was a really interesting move. Like I, I would have never thought of that, but it's totally like you can say match optional date for a created ad timestamp. Mm-hmm. Makes sense. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And then he does it a little bit differently. He was showing off his uh, style for uh, running server side code and then the untrusted client code. Mm-hmm. And how, and was he talking? He talks, he says it's a two tier method. Uh, and so that was super interesting. Uh, yeah. and I like it. I think I'm going to start, I think I'm going to, in my next project, I'm going to play around with this, uh, yeah. this way of writing it and I'm going to see what I like about it. Yeah. It's a, it's a pattern. And, yeah. uh, you know, I think the interesting thing is here that, um, testing becomes a little bit easier by going this method as well. Uh, which is a nice benefit. Um, mm-hmm. What else? Was I there? like how he talks about uh, the, the user ID uh, because it's different between server and client. Mm. Yeah, yeah. And a lot of people get hung up on that. Like they yeah. don't, they don't understand the ins and out of that. Um, yeah, yeah. There's... So I'm glad he he went a little bit of an extra mile to explain that. Yeah, the consistency could be better, but he's just wrapped it into a method called try user ID that has a try catch around mm-hmm. it, which is nice. Yeah. Um, yeah, and he just talked about like, I mean, using the check package instead of simple schema for doing the kind of the, the schema. So yeah, just a great read. So it is. It's a it's a short read. Um people who are have built Meteor apps in the past, well, I feel like they'll grasp it right away. And, yeah. And it's worth a try. So Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. One, one of the few articles that uh, doesn't rely on third-party packages. You know, he's just talking about the stuff that's included. Um, except for he does add the audit checker. Uh, the force audit checker what's that package probably but that's not really a third party it's just no. making sure you're you're checking arguments at runtime and then pete yeah. pete has a, a version that checks it at startup time too yeah that right. was really interesting pile time yes yes yeah. I, I i'm gonna rewatch all the um the unconference video talks when they come out yeah yeah, yeah. i gotta get those up um so i'm gonna start with the ones that you know, some people installed the desktop wire presenter pro or whatever. And so I was able to get their slides on automatically. Um, but I think there's only two of those. And then the other ones I got to get slides for and kind of interject them in. So people. Very cool. I'm kind of glad that you didn't record mine. <laughs> well, you're going to have to give it again though. So. <laughs> uh, I'm not sure if I'm going to like, there's totally all of a sudden there's a little bit of a, there's a little bit of a, it's taken up a little bit of my spare time too much. People are oh, so yeah. interested and all of a sudden there's like a break. Everybody wants to make money, dude. <laughs> Ben's got a get rich quick scheme. I love it. I get to be so sarcastic. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. So last story, we are talking about Meteor 121 coming out. What, what? Mm-hmm. I had no idea. Uh, it was kind of a minor release, but I thought it was probably worth mentioning. I remember reading the history. Like yesterday, and I yeah. already forgot though. So it's it's, pr- it's pretty short. Um, yeah. So it looks like they made uh, inserts faster for a collection, um, but they've moved to it's cryptographically insecure. Mm, that's right. That's um, what so you know, if you still need something that's going to be cryptographically secure, you should look at random.id still. But this is going to be a little bit faster. Um, they uh, renamed the ECMAScript collection package to ECMAScript runtime, and they've included more polyfills and shims uh, from core JS. And so I was just looking at that, and it looks like uh, they've got symbol and map and set in there now. So that's good. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Mm-hmm. Um, and just, uh, they, they changed a little bit how allow and deny work, which I, you know, that, that's a little weird for me to be in a, a little patch release, uh, one, two, one. Yeah. Um, I don't, I don't know that I, I totally agree with that. Uh, but there's, you know, they've, um, they updated source map, which I thought was interesting in order to accommodate Webpack a little bit better. Um, so that was kind of cool. 
and um, check now returns instead of throwing errors internally, which should make things a little bit faster. Um, but yeah. might be, you know, again, might be a little weird if you're relying on check to throw an error. You know, make sure your code still works. Uh, and then just a little bit of a, a workaround for building for Galaxy while on a non, I guess, uh, on a Windows machine more than anything. Mm -hmm. You know, Linux or, or Mac should be fine deploying. But if you have private packages that have binaries and you're on Windows, uh, I guess that was a little bit of a problem. And then our good friend Eric, his, his pull request that got in there was, uh, the port environment variable can now take a named pipe to better support deployment on IIS. Nice. Yeah. So, you know, not, not a ton, um, but what's interesting is I'm pretty sure the insert speed up that they did um, came out of knowledge deploying uh, stuff to Galaxy. And so I think we're already starting to see, you know, they're, they're speeding up the framework because they're actually deploying an app that they're supporting to Galaxy. And, mm -hmm. you know, I think as, as we get more and more support requests in, from Galaxy customers too, we're just going to, we're going to all reap the benefit of that. So, yeah, yes. like now they have like money tied to their performance and issues. And so whenever like Galaxy comes up or Galaxy users come up and say, hey, yo, this is a real issue for us, mm -hmm. money behind it. So that, that's going to get fixed right away. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, that's awesome. awesome for the whole community. So you know what we forgot to mention? What's that? Are the great sponsors of the Unconference. Oh, yeah. We had a ton. Yeah, yeah actually, I'm, I'm, I'm putting together an email. I think I'm going to send out this weekend, just kind of like outlining again how – it was awesome to have all the sponsors we did. Mm -hmm. uh, but OK Grow and Modulus were definitely the two huge sponsors. Um, they, they came through and, and really just kind of like took some of the burden off. You know, I had no idea if I could sell tickets. And like I, they just believed in me and said, yeah, sure. Like, we'll, we'll do it. It's no brainer. Like, you always deliver value to us. Yeah. And uh, Modulus, I haven't had a chance to talk to Paul in depth, but Modulus already emailed me. And they're like, it was amazing. <laughs> they were great. It. I just uh, I deploy I deployed a money bot to Modulus this morning. Super yeah. easy, right? <laughs> super easy, super easy. Uh, I also really liked that they took the time to have like a little forum. Yeah, about, they did like a little Q and A up there uh, with I don't know, like eight or nine people went up there and they were just yeah. I was too involved winning coup. To <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But I had my boy Rishi up there, and so he came down and filled me in. Yeah. Um they are going to be seriously looking at opening up uh, Oplog on their mind. Yeah, yeah. I've been telling them that for months, but I'm, I'm hoping they listen. So, Yeah. But, you know, I mean, so. Galaxy doesn't offer database support yet, so it's not like, I mean, no matter what, you got to shop that elsewhere if you want a good performant database. Yeah, yeah. And, can, I uh, some, can I share some news for, for uh, OK Grow really quick? Yeah, yeah. So I just heard that we're going to be looking for developers. Ooh. So if you guys want to want to work for a full-time media shop, email me. Is that okgrow.com? Is that remote okay? Remote? Absolutely. US yeah. okay? US is okay. Canada is okay. And if you are a rock star and you're really good at like communicating everything that you're working on, if you're international, go for it, man. Give it a shot. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. So give me a shout out, Ben at okgrow.com and uh, we'll get you going, man. We'll see. We'll see how it all rolls. Yeah, definitely. You should hit up the uh, media club Slack chat room too. I will. Yeah. This is a like a number, number of people in there that would probably like apply. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So, so that's cool. Um, yeah. Some of the other sponsors were like, Discover Meteor, Kadira, Astronomer, uh, Compose. Compose was another big one, um, yeah. you know, and uh, Keen.io. Yes. And um, gosh, Max and uh, Meteor right. Boys. Right. Yeah, that was pretty awesome. So, you yeah. know, they, they, they made everything possible. Like we had beer, you know, I didn't even put it up, but Dispatch sent over some money to buy a couple cases of beer and they're like, you don't even have to mention us. We just want to contribute some beer money for you guys because you're awesome. That's awesome. 
Yeah. So, um, you know, it, I, everybody came together. We were able to make a stellar event for that thing, you know, mm -hmm. food and booze and fellowship. And, uh, you know, we, we even had uh, raspberry pies. We were going to do the hackathon with that at first. And then we decided not to, but then we gave them away as prizes for the hackathon winners. Mm -hmm. uh, I will say I kept one back for myself. <laughs> Um, and my, my son's loving it. Uh, it's got scratch on it. So have you heard of scratch? No, I haven't. Your, your, your kids might get into this. Um, so it's like a MIT programming language and it's all kind of visual and you just kind of like drag and drop yes. different, um, uh, methods on there and you can like yes. put things in there and like he's making cats like jump all over the screens. So. I think I, I saw that on a meteor club podcast one of our guests told us about it oh yeah 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 yeah, yeah. totally aaron did aaron yes. uh, camarada or whatever mm -hmm. yep. what was. he did he did but my son's totally digging it because it comes installed with raspbian so he's uh he's been playing with that for the last couple of days that's awesome yep very cool all right man this was a long episode so sorry guys <laughs> sorry <laughs> we had a lot of fun at space camp and we wanted to tell you how much it sucked you weren't there come next time please do yes all right until next time josh yeah happy halloween man yeah spooky. spooky this is gonna come out after halloween though this video has been a meteor club production you can find out more information about meteor club and join the mailing list by clicking on the meteor club button below if you enjoyed this video you can also hit the subscribe button below and get more content like this thanks for watching